welcome to the next installment of my RNA series. You can see here we are pattering out the bodice part. It has been a minute since I've been able to sit down and actually edit a video, so I am so sorry that you have not heard anything about this um, tutorial series. But anyway, um, I basically just wrap myself in cellophane and then again in blue painter's tape and take a black sharpie. And using my reference photos, I'm going to sketch out the pattern of the bodice. Now, um, at this point, I pretty much switch over to foam for the majority of my build here because um, one, the warbler tends to get pretty heavy and it also can kind of be pretty pricey and I really just prefer to work with foam for the most part. So once you've got your basic shape patterned out, we are going to cut out the booby parts because we are going to need to make those a little bit differently um, because they need to be more of like a concave shape. All right, we're going to transpose those pieces onto craft foam following the normal procedure here. These are four millimeter pieces of craft foam. So it's got a little bit of thickness to it, but it's not so thick you can't shape it very well. We're just gonna blast that with our heat gun, add on some contact cement, let that set up, and then we're going to press our edges together. All right, this is the actual underneath part. You can see we're just gonna heat it up. Um, basically what I did was just mirrored this. It helps with your proportions. If you just sketch out one half on your pattern, flip it over, and then you're able to trace out the other part of your pattern onto the craft foam. Make sure everything is symmetrical. Um, these are the booby cups um, and <laughs> the shoulder strap pieces. Like I said, these need to be more concave, so we don't need to cut a dart out of the foam, but we're just gonna follow our normal process um, and shape them on here. I'm using it on my mannequin form here just so I can make sure that it is curved in on those center pieces. I wanna make sure that those stay together because they're not actually attached to anything. I wanna make sure that the shape is correct. So just heating that up with my heat gun and then holding it in so that way the inside little pieces curve in and that way they hold their shape the right way. All right, so once that's attached, I'm going to go in and attach my zipper. Now, um, I just attached the zipper directly to the craft foam here using contact cement, but I did, you'll see it as we go through, I did sandwich it. Um, I wanted to show you guys this because it's actually a really great way to make your foam pieces wearable um, and you're able to get in and out of them. I use a pretty strong zipper that did have exposed teeth. It, was just a sturdier one that I thought would really kind of be able to stand up a little bit better to some use. But I basically just add my contact cement to one side of the craft foam and then I put the zipper on the other side with contact cement. You just want to make sure that you don't get too close to your zipper teeth because you don't want it to get all gummed up and not be able to zip up and down very easily. Now, you'll see here that my zipper is actually very long. Um, I got a longer zipper because I wasn't exactly sure how long I was going to need, but it's fine. You just really go ahead and and take a pair of needle nose pliers to pry off your zipper stop on the top, snip the zipper where you need it to be, and then reattach your zipper stops onto the part of the zipper where you want it to finish. So we're just gonna wait for our contact cement to dry a little bit here. And then we will press that zipper to the inside portion of the bodice. Just give it a few firm presses there. I just want to make sure there's enough space for my zipper to go up and down and there is and it looks good so then like I said just to give it a little bit more additional stability I am taking this other strip of craft foam and just sandwiching the zipper fabric in between it just so I have a little bit more stability and, and reassurance that my zipper won't pull off Okay, then I'm just gonna take my additional piece of foam and press it down firmly. Oh, well, nope, first I'm gonna trim my zipper. So this is, like I said, this is about where I'm gonna be trimming my zipper. Um, I just took off the majority of it so it wouldn't get in the way. But here we go with 
the extra piece of craft foam, I'm just gonna smush down the opposite side there just to keep it sandwiched nice and safe and neat. Once we've got both sides of that attached, we are going to switch over a little bit more to the details on our armor. Now, there is a little bit of a cutout on the center bottom piece here. So um, using kind of like that mirror half folded piece of paper, I'm just gonna pattern out the shape that I want. And like I said, if you use this mirror kind of folded paper method, it's gonna keep your proportions in line and your, your design symmetrical. I just wanna cut out the shape that I'm looking for. And then we will hold it up to our armor piece and trace out exactly what we want. A little bit too high, so we don't want to leave it too thin on the top because we want it to have some structural integrity. We don't want it to worry about splitting or test or separating, but that's basically what we're looking for. Okay, once we have that traced on there, we're just gonna go in with our razor or straight blade here and cut out our shape. Okay, we're back on our dress form now and we are going to continue on with our details. So I'm just taking my roll of blue painters tape and I'm going to completely cover the bodice um, because we need to go back in and add our little armor pieces as well as um, some cast resin, ge cast resin gems that we've added as well too. Okay, once we are all covered with blue painter's tape, I'm going in with some scissors and just kind of trimming any excess so that way I can still see the outline and the shape that I'm looking for with this. Um, and I know where to layer in my other pieces as well too. Then I'm going to take my black Sharpie and make a mistake. But that's okay, because <laughs> that's why we're doing it this way. So I'm just looking at my reference photo off screen on my phone, um, and I'm going in, and I'm just going to sketch in the additional layered armor pieces that we see on the design. And I'm holding up my cast resin gems, so that way I know how large um, I need to make my pattern pieces that go around them. You want to just make sure with those gems in the front, you kind of keep them off to the side one way or the other um, because you don't want to look like you just have like these really weird white nipples on the front of your chest. And then the good thing about the painter's tape is you can just add little pieces of it in, scraps of it in to cover up anything that you may have missed. Okay, now that I've got all of my shapes pretty much well sketched in, we're going to transfer them to, um, I just use regular copy paper for this. Sometimes I'll use construction paper, but this is basically what those pieces are going to look like. So I'm pinning them to my form, um, and then I'm going to take a silver marker and just trace them. And the reason why I do this is because I need to know, once I take my pattern pieces off, where I should be adding my contact cement. So you'll see, I just do this one by one. So I take off the top pattern piece, I sketch it out onto a piece of craft foam off camera, I go in with my contact cement, and then I go in with my piece. And that is a method I use to cover the entire bodice with these layers. So um, you can basically just follow that as you go all the way around. 
and that's how she's gonna look so you can see it's got the other layers and then I continue on to the back as well too next thing I'm gonna do is add on these cool kind of like shoulder shoulder blade armor pieces I just used construction paper here to pattern out the shapes that I'm looking for um, and similar to what I did for the rest of the costume it is really just uh, patterned over mirror image so that way it's going to match up as well too so here's the pieces that you can see now on that inside edge I did cut it on a little bit of a bevel um, because it does kind of make like um, I don't know like a crease like a shark fin you'll see once it's actually up on the bodice um, but this is only part one of the video you guys will continue to see the rest of the costume in part two so you can see it's got that point there I'm just gonna go ahead in and add this to the back of the armor and then we will continue with the rest of this cosplay in another video thank you guys so much for watching I certainly hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you again soon bye everyone